Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra, book 4, episode number 2 and 3, reaction. Okay, the previous two episodes, which were the episode number 13 of season 3, and episode number 1 of season 4, and in episode number 13, that is the final episode of season 3, we, uh, we were in the final phase of the battle between Zahid. Korra gets uh, poisoned and uh, you know like they were trying to bring out her avatar state so that they could kill her and you know end the whole cycle and what whatever and uh, it kind of backfired Korra you know like attacked back while on the other hand you know like uh, Kai and all of them were able to save Jinora and uh, they got out the final battle uh, you know like Marco Bolin comes in they defeat uh, Gazan and uh, um the girl the waterbender girl and they defeat them we don't know what happened i think they pro either they probably died you know in, the, in that thing I, I'm, I'm not sure what happened they did not show what happened to them probably they they're not alive anymore and uh, uh, while uh zahir uh Korra fights with him unfortunately by the end of it she is too tired because the poison is seeping into her body she could not hold it they cannot they cannot hold uh the ground so Zahir tried to take her and like you know, run away, but Jinora and all the other airbenders made a tornado, trapped them, and trapped Zahir. And uh, yeah, and Korra was almost dying, but then Suyin comes in and takes the metal out by metal bending. And she's okay, but she cannot properly bend now. You know, like she's weak, she needs little rest. So that's how it ended. It's it it was sad. Uh, even though like you know Cora was like you know in a very like in a life and death situation, her mentally like you know she was her mental situation was also not good. Uh, one good thing uh, did happen, which was Jinora got her sta uh, tattoos, and uh, she became an airbending master. And that's how it ended there. In season four, we see a lot of things have changed. There was like a little time skip, and a lot of things have changed. You know, like Kuvira has is getting more stronger and stronger. Uh, she's like you know like what kind of like trying to make like a new kingdom for her or something doing her own stuff Bolin is working for Kuvira, but she, he probably doesn't have any idea what she's planning to do um, on the other side um, uh, What else? Uh, Asami, you know like the future industries they like, you know, like helped make uh, Republic City a better place um, uh, Marco is the bodyguard of Wu? I think that was his name. The the prince who is going to be the appointed prince of the uh, Earth, uh, like you no know, Ba Say. And uh, yeah, like and Kai and um, Opal, they're like uh, working as like you know airbending uh, nomads. They're like trying to help all the other people in need, and that's what they're doing. And Opal is obviously not happy with Bolin's decision to like you know help Kuvira, and all these things are happening. And uh, in the end, uh, Korra was supposed to come here, but Korra's missing, and we see Korra is just fighting in a ring. Now, I do think that was the same ring where Aang, or maybe the same place where Aang and uh, Toph met. So, who knows, maybe we'll meet Toph. I'm kind of, like, you know, looking forward to that, because this is almost the final, like, you know, like, season. So, I'm, I'm guessing if we have to meet Toph, we will probably meet her in this season. So, let's see what happens. This is episode number two of uh, the legend of Korra book four so yeah I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go hmm Right, let's Yep. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's see. Cora alone. Hmm. Oh boy. Damn. Oh god. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that noise. Yo. What? What? You crazy or something? Oh my god, she's getting flashbacks. Wait, what? Is this like her internal conflict? Probably. Yeah, it's an internal conflict. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Oh boy. For a moment I thought that was Anne. <laughs> Pen pal. Hmm. Couple of weeks. Three years. Oh boy. Hmm. <sighs> well. God damn. Like the mental pressure is. Ah, oh, Naga. Yeah. Almost a month. Wait, she has not. Oh, she hasn't gone to Katara still. Okay. What? Internal. Yep, there you go. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Big toe. Okay. Oh. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Alright, so that's how she's able to walk again. Alright. Oh boy. Oh my god, she's again getting the flashbacks. Oh my god. Is this Sasami? Oh. Hmm. Uh, I feel like this in itself kind of like you know she feels she probably feels lonely like she feels like everyone's like leaving her like you know and moving forward while she's just stuck red monsoon like seeing everyone just moving forward wait what what is this oh my god okay <laughs> Oh. 
And she's, as I said, like, you know, she's probably thinking that, oh, I'm stuck here, everyone's moving forward. And, like, a sense of loneliness, you know. Just, even though people have good intentions, they're writing with good intentions. It's, I don't know. Oh my god. You see, as I as I said, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but she'll have to find out. Oh yeah, okay, visualize again. <laughs> no. It's all in the in inside, you know, the mental. As she said, visualize. Then she'll be able to walk properly. Alright, there you go. Alright, a little bit more. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, I wonder what happened after that. Why is she like just moving around? What the who's that? Um, that's suspicious. Random dog in the middle of the Oh my god. Wait, what? How can the dog... Isn't that her internal... Or is the dog also her internal thing or something? Oh. But this random dog in the middle of the street, I, I feel that very suspicious. Like, what was that? I feel like this dog is some kind of... Symbolic thing for Cora. This dog is so out of place in the, in this city. <laughs> so out of place. Okay. All right, everyone's, everyone's probably trying to find Cora now. Like she's gone missing suddenly. Wait, what? Oh, okay, this is still flashback. Okay, she seems pretty happy here, then... Alright. Okay. Nice. Oh no, she's still getting... Ah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, she still needs a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. Oh my god. I don't think so. Kuvira has it under her control. 
Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well. Okay. Yeah. So it took oh. Okay, so it took two years for her to. Oh. <sighs> mm. Oh, she she probably would say that I I need to yeah, and this is where she so this is like six months. Okay, so, oh, uh, okay, so she said she's going to Republic City, then she went somewhere else. Ah, oh, poor Naga. Damn. <laughs> Wait, this guy. He's the same guy, isn't he? From after the last ever? Yeah! I recognize him. Angrels. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? What do we have? Yo, the thing is. Oh, it is usually okay. Whoa! Oh no, Shh. she is going to. Stop right there! Alright. Oh no, 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 no! Oh no. The drama. He bought a knife? Oh no, sorry, that's a cleaver. Oh boy. Oh no, again, hallucinations. Hmm. Okay, she's just all right. She she wanted to go to Republic City, but she's like, nah. I need more time. And she cut off her hair. Okay. Okay, what place is this? Wait, is this the... Yeah, it's the portal. Oh, she came here. Okay, so Vatu's sealed here, isn't he? Or no? Oh, no, no. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa, the spirits can speak. I, I guess they could speak. Wait, so Rava...
<laughs> Wait, so then Okay. Just How? Maybe she could have, like, uh, people told her, not spirits. Maybe the spirits could help her. I don't know, like, maybe. Oh, boy. I was wondering, why did the mo mom and the dad did not, like, you know, try to find her, like, six months? So this is what was happening. She wrote back to them. The parents were like, oh yeah, she, okay, she's there having fun, but, whoa, is that a hallucination? Oh my god, the desert's playing tricks on, you know, her eyes. Ah. My god. You know what? Follow her. Yeah. Like, I'll see where she actually goes. Like, I feel like that's going to... What the? Oh, she came here. That's why she started fighting. She probably thought that maybe this can help. Oh, she's standing there. Oh, my God. Okay, so this is how she ended up here. All right. Oh. So she thinks she needs to defeat the opponent to... Oh my god. And, and then this happened, okay. Random dog, and... Oh, whoa, th is this the, the... There, this is spirit, it's the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying this, like, no, she, she never asked, what, someone's here, oh my god, oh, Oh my god, wait, what? Isn't this like a... How is it physically harming her? Alright, something is going on here. What is this thing? Yeah. Oh. Oh no. Oh, what is happening? Up until now, I thought this was like a mental thing but it's physically harming her
All right, this is weird. <coughs> hmm, who's this woman? Okay. Wait, she knows. Oh, that yo, that's off, isn't it? Yeah, I'm like, who is this? All right. Wow, she kind of looks the same still. <laughs> okay, wow. All right, so, so the spirit has been leading her here to meet Toph. Yes. All right, so this episode, we begin with a little, um, not flashback, but we go to the perspective of Korra and see what has been going on up till now. And uh, the first thing that happens is Korra comes out from the toilet and a random guard bumps into her almost and then this this weird like you know her doppelganger or whatever i'm going to call it her doppelganger you know this thing is like you know in front of her and just trying to rile her up so like from the beginning i thought this was like an internal thing um a mental thing and this was just her hallucinating or something along those lines but by the end of it, I'm not so sure now. Like, if it was really a mental thing, who, like, how was she getting hurt? You know, how was she, you know, she was actually fighting someone there. Who was that? So, I'm not so sure anymore. But anyways, um, this thing, she is, like, you know, always, like, in front of Korra. Korra is just, like, you know, kind of lashing out at it, but it just disappears or goes away somewhere. So... Yeah, and uh, now the actual problem here we kind of get to know when we get to go to Cora's uh, flashback or her recollection of what happened after that day. And uh, we see how Marco Bolin and Asami, they had obviously had to go back to Republic City while Cora had to go back to her home to, um, you know, like heal and to take rest. So now here's the thing, you know, like Marco Bolin and Asami, they, they definitely had the greatest intentions in their mind when they thought about Korra. They were probably like, all right, take your time. You are the avatar. You can, you know, like you, you've done so much. Now it is our time to pick up the slack and, you know, help the world out. So you take a break. That was their intention here. And now, you know what this, like, this, this whole thing was, this problem was? Um, Korra was actually mentally affected as well. So we've seen before multiple times, Korra always has a huge sense of responsibility in a way, which is kind of weird in a way, you know, like she, she, like, you know, her sense of responsibility is a bit, a bit excessive and, uh, probably because she's the avatar, you know, probably because of that. And, um, Th that's why this hurt her the most because she was like oh i'm just sitting here being able to do nothing while my friends are doing so many things in this time of crisis i cannot do anything to help them i'm just sitting down here while they are moving forward with their life i'm all alone here and uh, this is something that was probably the main reason why she was being so much affected like not one, one, yeah, one of the main reasons or part of the reason why she is still so, like, you know, like her mental state is still so shaky now. So this thing of this fear of getting left behind and uh, at the same time, the drama of, like, you know, fighting Zaheer and, uh, like, you know, the, what do you call it? The drama of not being able to do her avatar duties again because she cannot get the connection to Rava back that all collectively 
was just eating at her and at that moment even her not being able to stand up was also eating at her which changed little by little she was able to walk later on and that was one thing out of her mind but still the other things remained you know like her avatar connection her friends just like you know you know leaving her behind you know just doing their own thing moving ahead while she's just in a standstill this thing as well and uh, all these like you know collectively was bothering her so we see the marco bolin and the, they're like all right let's like you know we're going and asami is like asami did tell Korra like should i stay you know like i, I could be with you uh but Korra's like nah it's okay i appreciate it but you do your own you know you have your duties to fulfill now here's another thing you know like this is the you could say the complication station here Korra most definitely did not like you know was was being affected by the fact that you know her friends are moving forward while she's at, at here at a standstill but at the same time she also did not want them to halt what they are doing to give her company that's also something that she did not want that's why she told asami that it's fine you know you go ahead you you have a lot of things on your plate you do them you know like no need to be here with me just you know like like you know so she doesn't want anyone else to just like you know stop because she's also at a standstill so this is the complication here you know she doesn't like you know the, it, it's bothering her that her friends are actually moving forward and she's at a standstill you know that's bothering her and at the same time it's also bothering her if someone tells her that all right you know like let me be with you that would also bother her because she doesn't want them to just stop everything and you know like stop moving forward because of her so this is <laughs> this is like a complicated situation and that's why she was so frustrated she just didn't even know what to do she's frustrated about the fact that she cannot do anything about the situation she's frustrated about the fact that she is feeling frustrated about you know like her being here and everyone doing their own thing and moving forward while she lets a standstill and she's also frustrated about the fact that someone if they try to help her out She's like, oh, they, they're just wasting their time on me, you know, like they could do so many things, accomplish so many things in this time. And I'm just letting them down, being a burden on them. So all these things at the same time. So the, the best solution of this, this whole thing is get better, you know? which she was trying to do. Unfortunately, it's not that easy, you know, like, the phys like you know, the uh, physical trauma could be healed most of the times. Mental trauma takes a lot of time and uh, yeah that was her problem and she she isn't even like you know like she doesn't even know what to do what could even heal this whole situation so we can see when she's back at her home you know she's every night she's like having nightmares and all like seeing zahir and everything her mom comes and mom is like all right like you know you go to katara and you know like get her help and she's like fine i'll do that and uh, Katara helps her out with the uh, a part of the mental and the physical trauma as well. Uh, her being unable to walk was kind of a mental thing here because, you know, like her envisioning that she could walk was all that it needed to properly do it. So as Katara said that, you know, your body probably feels still feels in danger, but envision that everything's fine. You can walk. And at first, it's, they started little. She was like, all right, try to like, envision your toe moving. And she did that and uh, it, it happened. Then she was like, all right, like little by little, let's increase this. Let's start walking. And, you know, they, like, you know she, she tried that. She was falling. And uh, then Katara was uh, like, all right, like, you know, it's okay. Like, you know, next day, we'll do even better. And just, you know, encouraging her. And... Uh, we see that uh, Asami Bolin and Marco has been writing the, her letters and uh, again like as I said I'm, I'm, I'm sure they have the best intention in mind but the letters here kind of put I feel like it, it was kind of pressuring Cora and like you know kind of bothering her at the same time as well like you know that's why she was not writing any letters. She was so conflicted about this situation 
because she does want to know what's happening over there but at the same time as soon as she gets to see like you know uh, like you know just uh sami saying like oh like i i got this contract bolin is like oh i started working for kuvira um uh marco's like i, I like you know, i've started my duty at this this whole operation whatever she he said you know as soon as she's getting to see this she gets reminded of the fact that she's not doing anything and you know, she's just being a burden while all of them are doing so many things at this like a you know, time of crisis the whole thing with ba sing say she's she's just being a burden that 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 thing strikes her as soon as she reads a letter that strikes her but at the same time it's not that she doesn't want to read those letters you know she wants to know what's happening she wants to know what's happening to her friends like it's a weird situation you know like if her friends stopped writing letters to her that in itself would be kind of bothering you know would be very bad you know i feel like that would be even worse than getting letters so that's also not an option she needs like you know those letters to make her feel included as well but at the same time like, you know as she is getting those letters and reading them the fact that she's being a burden and she's just sitting around while everyone's doing these things are also bothering her so as i said complicated stuff you know <laughs> like you can't go anywhere like you know like this like there's like two parts and both of the parts are just like you know with its own share of troubles and uh, you just have to choose the path which has a lesser share of troubles than the other one which is like getting the letters as i said like you no know, not getting the letters would be even worse in this situation so getting the letters and you know like is a better thing here because that reminded her that yeah i'm still part of this you know this whole thing i'm still part of everyone no one has forget or forgotten me but because at that moment she did not have anything else to like you know report she herself was not getting any better she did not write back but as soon as we see you know the next few days we see how um cora kind of you know like kind of lashes at like katara a little bit she's like what the hell is happening like you know uh, like i cannot move i cannot cook i cannot do anything and all the time i'm getting this, like you know these type of like you know visions and all and uh, just like you know and you can't even heal me i'm stuck with you here just sitting around while my friends are doing everything and they're moving forward <laughs> And Katara's like, yeah, let it flow, let it flow all out. And um, here Katara kind of says that, yeah, like you know, like Ang also had to go through go through so many things. Imagine what how she felt when he realized that her his whole you know like the air nomads are all gone. Yeah, uh, and she's like, all right, envision, envision walking to Naga, and little by little she was able to walk properly, and yeah. Now, as I said, like you know, as soon as this happened, as soon as she was able to walk, you could see that she saw that there was like an improvement, and that's from when, like you know, she started writing the letters back. Not to everyone though, but only to Asami. As she said, like you know, I I'm not writing to Bolin and Marco because they wouldn't understand. I feel like if, like you know, talking to you is a lot better and i'm able to like you know get my thoughts across a lot better to you than those two but don't tell them that i'm writing letters only to you they'll be hurt so like you know this is just for the time being and uh, yeah like you know it's progression as i said um as soon as she was able to walk she wrote the letters back because she has something to say now she she could say something like all right like this happened today so like you know kind of feel included as well so yeah now uh, okay then we get back to the present and okay like this random dog in the middle of the street <laughs> i'm like what the hell what is this dog doing here this dog doesn't look like you know <laughs> the place where she was in and the dog was not matching at all i'm like something's going on with the dog and there you go something was indeed going on but the dog the, the funny thing here is the dog was also the dog or, or the spirit that we get to know later was also seeing that thing was following the thing so as i said like you know at first i thought that was that whole doppelganger of cora was like a like a mental thing that only cora was seeing but maybe not maybe it's some kind of spiritual thing you know that's why the spirits can also see them but the normal humans cannot see them cora can see that thing so it's probably something you know spirit related or something is going on that's why the dog was barking at it but anyways the dog was like Ah, oh, follow me. <laughs> and Cora just follows it while at the same time the next scene we get to see what happened after Cora is able to walk. After Cora is able to walk, 
uh, Denzin came in and Korra tried to show her uh, him that I can fight. But unfortunately, as soon as the battle started, she get started getting Zaheer and like, the PTSD kicks in. And uh, Tenzin says like everything's fine, they're doing like you know the Kuvira's like you know taking control and oh boy that's another problem in itself, Kuvira taking control of things. But anyways, Korra's like yeah this I should be doing this but yeah like I'm, I'm just having these like you know visions and this is where she writes the letter to Asami and she says like I'm, I'm trying meditating but nothing's helping because when Katara thinks this is all mental. Now, here's where Korra was like, all right, I need to go back to Republic City. Maybe being with my friends will help me out. And uh, I was like, you know, I think this was like a correct decision she took here. Like at, th at that moment, she she really thought about going back to Republic City, which changed in the middle of the like, you know, journey. She changed her mind, though. But at that moment, she really wanted to go to Republic City. So she takes a boat, you know, uh, alone, like goes and we can see how she's happy, you know, like uh, she, like the outside air like getting to her and she's like oh this is so nice and she goes to this place this village <laughs> excuse me this little village damn the hip hiccups Ugh. so this guy i remember he's, he's he's from avatar i think i don't remember which episode is what it was but this guy i remember him <laughs> he talks about how he has pictures with all the previous avatars and all and he's like, oh, let's, let's get your picture as well. And random thugs just, like, you know, robbing people. He's like, you're the avatar, go ahead. Cora was like, all right, fine. She goes there, tries to stop them. But unfortunately, again, the PTSD kicks in. And yeah. Now, again, like, you know, she goes towards Republic City from there onwards. But then she sees the doppelganger or whatever just standing there. And this is where she made a decision to not go there because I think she probably thought that I need to get myself like you know what do you call it like I, I need to cure myself first what will I even do going to Republic City I'll again be a burden for my friends this time I was a burden towards my parents before now I'll be a burden towards, towards my friends so that in itself is not a happy feeling you know like like her going there, you know, like, and just being, what can I say, like, you know, being like a liability, that's not a happy feeling. And she's like, yeah, I need to get this under control. Before that, I cannot go there. I, I'll just make more trouble for Marco Bolin and Asami. So I cannot do that. So she turns the thing around and goes somewhere else. And uh, she cuts off her hair and, like, you know, throws the thing. And uh, she changes her appearance a little bit so that other people might not be able to see, like, kind of recognize who she is. And she's like, "All right, I need to get to the bottom of this." She goes to the um, the portal, you know, and goes to the tree of life. I think that's what it was, it was called. And uh, sits there, tries to meditate. And here, the spirits come in. And now, here's the thing: the little spirit says, "Like, let let me help you." She's like, oh, like I get hot help for so many people, it it didn't help at all. So yeah, I have to do this on my own. Like I can I can understand what she's trying to say here, but I thought like it would have been a better idea if she let the spirits help her at that moment because she got help from the people. This is spirits we're talking about. Maybe the spirits can do something. But she's like, oh, I need to face this on my own, and she just leaves. <laughs> But yeah, like you know, if, if she actually got the help from the spirits, I think a lot of things could have been avoided. Because by the end of it, the spirit does end up helping her. You know, she did, did like you know, the little spirit did end up leading her to Toph. So, yeah, anyways, um, so Cora just gets up and leaves. And then she's going here and there and trying, like, you know, trying to, like, you know, goes to the, the desert. Some, like you know one time she does see Rava but it was like an illusion of the desert and then when she's like, you know, kind of walking in one of the cities she sees the, the, the doppelganger thing again and she's like alright enough is enough let me just follow this and follows it and sees that the thing actually leads her to the ring 
and uh, she goes to the ring. She's like, all right, I, I need I need to fight whoever the king is fighting in this ring because the the thing was like s just standing over there. And she thought maybe I can do something if I fight and defeat this person. And uh, now still here up until even now, I was under the impression this whole doppelganger thing was a mental thing because the person who was attacking her in the ring was the opponent. And you know the 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 the, the doppelganger thing was just like an illusion that she was seeing attacking her but it was actually the opponent so i thought it was still a mental thing but still things kind of start, start, take a different turn from here on she gets defeated in the ring and uh, you know like and then we see what happens after that and we like you know fast forward to the present time she's following the dog and the dog takes her to the the forest the swamp and wait, is this the same swamp? Um, ah, that, that swamp. I, I don't remember. Like in, in, the, in the comic, in the Avatar comic, I remember. Like, you know, uh, Azula, Zuko, uh, uh, Aang, all of them, like, you know, find their mom, went to one of the swamps. I don't remember what it is. It's been a while I've read that comic, you know. Uh, like, you know, the, the aftermath of everything. You know, like after like you know defeating Fire Lord Ozai, what happened? The whole like you know search for Zuko's mom, that thing, and that that part. Well, like I remember them going to a swamp or something like that. You know, uh, Azula was with them. You know, and uh, to find their mom. So is this the same swamp or is this some different swamp? I don't know. Anyways, but yeah. So the little dog leads her to the swamp. And we see the dog was the spirit and that's why i said you know like if she let the spirit help her all of this could have been avoided i guess but still like you know like we are here by the end of it the spirit is like all right come follow me like you know i'm going to take you to somewhere and to someone and then again we see this random doppelganger in front of her and she starts attacking her now here's where i realized like this is not a simple mental thing something is happening you know because up until now they were not physically attacking her but now she's physically getting attacked and uh, something is going on so my guess is that's probably some kind of spirit and maybe that has something to do with rafa you know maybe that is rafa you know maybe rafa is trying to tell something to Korra, but she's not getting that's why she's unable to get to tap into like you know get the connection back to rafa because rafa has been in front of her for up until now and she's trying to tell something to her but some, i don't know we'll see but this thing starts attacking her and like you know like the, the whole catches her like the mercury is there like you know kind of takes her down with her and she Cora wakes up in a place and there's someone an old lady making something and as soon as she said like what did she say um okay she says your avatar sense is called uh... okay as soon as she says we were good friends in your previous life i'm like all right this is tough i was just saying in the previous episode that maybe we'll meet tough here because you know the ring and everything and oh then maybe that's why uh like you know the 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 the, the doppelganger thing lead, led her to the ring you know maybe that was like a prerequisite for her to eventually meet Toph and uh, Toph will probably be able to help her out I don't know how but some way we'll see <laughs> and uh, Toph was like oh, what did welcome like you know what twinkle toes <laughs> the thing that she called Aang oh my god all right so that was that and that's where it ended so let's start with episode number three yeah episode number three of the legend of Korra, book four i'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here think it whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go. all right oh boy we finally meet off Wait, so we have met Katara, Toph, Zuko. Saka is probably not alive anymore, I think. That's kind of sad. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. The coronation. Oh wait, the coronation. Ah. Uh, wait, what? Ah. All right. Six R show. Oh, really? So what are you going to do? Wow. Okay. What? Oh, damn! <laughs> ah! Yeah? Yeah, so basically a puppet, okay. Yeah. Damn. I don't know if she's going to so readily. Yeah, so she's not going to so readily. Oh, okay. Gave. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This guy is weird, but. <laughs> sure. Hmm. Not that. She's basically saying that. <laughs> ah, yeah, true. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> oh my god oh no Toph's training I remember the way he trained Aang oh my god not not her but another person what Oh my god. Oh no. yo, Julie. <laughs> this guy. What what the what the <laughs> So are you? Ah! Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> nah. Yeah. His personal bodyguard. Yo, I want to see Wu and Bolin interact. That'll be funny. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, so you know, sir. Oh my God. Atar Junior. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, then you're... Oh no. This will be a weird conversation. Um, yo. What? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Junior sleep. Yeah, we know that very well. Oh my god, this girl will be a problem. Yeah, where's... What the? Oh my god. Yeah, oh, we saw that happen. The crown, the crown is not that. Whoa! <laughs> well, that's too small. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Well, Kuvira is just... <laughs> He's so overdramatic. Oh! Damn! <laughs> well, there you go. That's the beginning. Ah. Ah. Uh -uh. Is that a frog squirrel? <laughs> yep, that's how she trains, you know. <laughs> She's just standing. Wow. Okay. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> The difference in the skills is insane. Oh my god. Wait, you only worked with one avatar. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, the whole thing with... The whole thing with, I think, her daughters. Okay. Hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> You're blind. <laughs> True. Oh no. Yeah. Marco! Oh wait. No, oh, where, where's Marco? I, I guess Kuvira as well. Oh no, she's going to just completely dominate the stage. Oh no.
Oh. Uh. Yeah, so I'm going to control everything now. Oh my god, to the world. Great. Wow. He's starting it. She's starting this here. <sighs> like all these. What? Oh, these are the. Great, another freaking, like, what's up with these villains? They think that they're better than the others, but they're doing the same thing. Like, all of these villains think that they're better than the other, but they're doing the same thing. Ah... Uh... Oh no, I feel like something's going to happen now. Oh, okay. Oh no. Uh. Yeah. Like I'll crush everyone. Yeah. What what? Ah, I don't think so, Kuvira. Oh yeah, really? Oh wow. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I don't trust this. Oh god. Oh, Suin is here. <laughs> Where is she left? Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah, so what... Right. Like, uh. <laughs> yeah, he's so crushed. <laughs> okay, what what is that? Ah, oh, wow. What is... Oh, wait. Oh, no, no. I was like, okay. Hmm. About that. Come on, Bolin. Yeah. Don't don't you dare.
Yeah. No, but yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, yo. Oh my god. <laughs> well, funny thing, the ironic situation, she, he himself is not free. He's talking about freedom. Yeah, true. Shopping. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, like what? Wait, what? Wait, didn't Suin take then there's still something left? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. This <laughs> is a <little> smoothie. <laughs> oh, yo! She just Oh my god, what she has merch now? Okay, you need to move now. Yo! Don't throw juice at people. Wait, how did Marcos? Oh, there it is. I was like, where's Marcos juice stains? <laughs> Oh no, they're gonna make this like a thing. They'll be like, oh, the, the king's body got attacked. Oh my god, you, you just see that. Someone made mustache. Yo, slow down. Wait, it's, it's the bear. What? Wait, who's this? It's my bro. <laughs> Wait, who's this kid? <laughs> this guy. Oh no. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, tell him. Yeah, Kuvira is bad, but Kuvira did do stuff. Oh my god, yo, move. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so... Uh, Alright. Wow, so the the, me the metal has been already always been in her body and she didn't even know. Oh my god. Probably just in, in her bloodstream or something. Hmm. 
Probably like her mental, like you know, <laughs> she's deliberately riling her up. Yeah, she can metal bend, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Oh wait, these three are going to go. <laughs> oh my god, Milo. <laughs> what the hell is that? Is that the vine? The spirit vine? Oh my god, they're like experimenting on it. Oh my god. Wow. Oh. That was this episode then. Okay, so... Thankfully, Cora is in... Like, you know, I finally found the right path now. She is with off now and uh, something will probably something good will probably come out of this by the end of it and uh, we just have to wait all right so we begin this episode with um Wu being excited of having <laughs> like being coronated and he's like oh this is like you know, she, she wants some badger what badger moles dance dance of the badger moles this and that he's just talking about that Talking about what happened before, this you know, it's like we can bring out some dance moves, and ah, he's he's just having the time of his life. <laughs> oh my god! While everyone's talking about how weather, what's going to happen? Like Vera, will she move down or not? Is she going to step down or what's like you know what's what's going on? And uh, I'm I, I was like, this is. Pretty much very apparent, Kuvia would never, never step down that easily. And uh, that's what happened by the end of it. And uh, I don't know what the hell they thought was going to happen. Like, you know, just, yeah, it ain't happening. Uh, Wu is not becoming the king. So, while all of that was happening, Korra is talking with Toph. And uh, he's like, all right, so can you help me out? No, I need to become my former self. I need to get that connection back. I need to become stronger. So she's like, you need to help train me. <laughs> At first off, I was like, nah, like, you know, and then she was like, all right, you know what? You're so pathetic that I feel like I should help you. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to bother me. <laughs> and uh, Toph is like, I'm going to train you. And oh boy, as soon as she said that, I got reminded of all the times that she trained Aang. And it, it, was, it was not, it was not a walk in the park, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> Cora was probably going to face a similar thing. So all of that was happening while uh, Vera is in the, uh, in the, in Basing Se, in the, in the coronation ceremony. No, wait. Yeah, in the coronation ceremony, uh, Mark, Mark Bolin is there, everyone's there, Eska and Desna is also there. <laughs> They kind of talked with bowling a little bit and all that stuff. Uh, Varric is here. Julie is here. And uh, yeah. So Bolin here meets Marco and you know, brothers, like, you know, they reunite. And uh, <clears throat> Bolin talks about how he is doing her, his job with Kuvira. When Marco talks about how he's the bodyguard of Wu and uh, like uh, like this whole thing of like you know Marco working not Marco sorry um, Bolin working for uh, Vera like as I said before he he thinks this is working out pretty well 
and uh, everything is going in the correct direction and now i wouldn't deny that kuvira did probably do a lot of things to help everyone out but that does not give her the authority or the freedom to become a dictator and say something like oh like you know this is under my control if anyone has any problem with that i'm going to crush them like that definitely doesn't give her that right and uh, like this this whole thing like i'm going to talk about it later but i find it funny this whole like you know thing in at least i've seen this in legend of korra where each villain thinks that they're better than the other villain while by the end of it they end up in the same place i i thought zahir was better than unalak and um amon and all of them but he ended up being the same like you know deluded individual by the end of it and here again we're seeing the same thing kuvira thinks he is better than all the others all the other villains and again the same delusional approach of i'm better than them and uh, yeah i'll do this a lot better everyone will be happy under my control like everyone have this grand grand os like you know goals it's some huge goals um zahi wanted to eradicate world leaders so she could make a new world kuvira wants kind of to do the same thing but for her she's like oh i made the earth kingdom so i have my right to control it this thing and like each and every person in this weird delusion of they're better than the others and they can do it better unfortunately that's not true all of them by the end of it they cannot slip up and they start walking on the wrong direction and the similar thing is happening here as well like these people don't learn they never will learn they 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 look at their past they see what have happened to the world and they do the same thing over again thinking that they're doing something better like like such what can i say like i don't know anyways um so yeah they're talking about all of that um suin meets batar i think that's his name now <laughs> I find I feel a little bad for Batar a little bit because the way Suin is like, oh, Batar Junior, and he's like, Mom, it's a Batar. Like I'm not a Junior anymore, or something like that. He said, and I do feel like uh, I don't know. Like, like here's the thing, you know, we can see that Batar is going in the wrong direction with following Kuvira, and I'm pretty sure Kuvira is just probably like you know, kind of using him as well. Um. But like we don't know the full picture here. Like you know, we don't know how Suin, you know, like how Suin's relationship with Batar was and what not. So I cannot actually comment here who is at the right, who is at the wrong. Maybe Batar has some past grievances, just like Suin and uh, Lin had past grievances with their mother. You know and uh, like Toph also had her grievances with her parents so this thing can like and will always happen like i think um i've heard like someone told like i've heard this somewhere this is like a very good line you know very good quote which it says that no one's like no person's childhood is perfect you know like, you know everyone has the problem with their parents like you know no one can say that oh my parents are perfect and my parents didn't have a, like you know like my childhood was all like everything was okay it never happens children will always find some problem with their parents everywhere every like and this always happens sometimes it it's big the whole problems is a little big sometimes it's kind of small uh it was huge the problem was huge with uh, toff and her parents her parents completely sheltered her so much didn't want to let her go away made her like a captive that was a big problem uh toff tried to like you know kind of work on that and for her children toff tried to do something better she gave them so much freedom that it backfired and again their childhood was also not perfect lin and suin's childhood were also not perfect and they also have their fair share of grievances with Toph. Similarly, Suyin here, now that she she is a mother, I'm pretty sure she probably 
has some like you know like you know her children has some grievances against her as well and she probably does something without knowing that she's doing something that's bothering her children that's why I, that's why i'm saying like that i don't know what's going on with batar and suin but i'm pretty sure they probably have some problems with each other as well and that's why i'm saying like i'm i'm not going to comment anything on batar it does seem like she's being fooled by uh, kuvira but at the same time i feel like he ended up like you know going along this direction probably because she had he had some grievances with her mom his mom which is suyin and uh, like you know, we kind of saw a little clash a little like you know tension here between her he and her mother when they were talking and i'm like yeah something is a problem here i feel like he is not happy with her mom his mom and probably has little bits and pieces of grievances that's why he probably just decided to follow vera because vera most probably buttered him up that stuff like oh you're doing great you know this is perfect this is how we should do it your mom doesn't understand you know like let let like you know let us do something great and then your mom will understand i'm pretty sure kuvira said something like that like i i know these tricks you know kuvira definitely says stuff like this you know like she would not like you know she would not go against uh, suyin kuvira i'm talking about but she just like you know just kind of probably twisted the words and said something like oh you know what come with me we'll make this a better place we'll make the earth kingdom so much better and then you can show your mom that yeah you're a big boy and batar was probably like yeah you're right let's go and that's why <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's something like this i'm definitely sure this happened so this is basically what's happening the the, the son wants to tell her mom that i'm grown up while the mom doesn't want to like you know like what do you call it accept that uh, his her son has is actually an adult now like the same problem so and that's why batar is making a big mistake actually going alongside kuvira i'm pretty sure he'll understand by the end of it where he had gone wrong or who knows like i'm i'm actually telling like i i don't know about the relationship between batar and kuvira if kuvira really likes him or is this all just like you know for show just because she wants like you know I don't know, like uh, some kind of a, uh, you know, backing from, yeah. So who knows? But mm, yeah, like we, I'm sure we'll get to know in the future. Anyways, um, enough about that. Um, who, <laughs> who tries to talk with Vera and <laughs> he <laughs> he messes up so bad. He they like I think someone's like oh like you know the the oh a uh, kuvira yeah kuvira's like uh the suite uh, the suite that you booked now uh, you're, you're not in there you know like it's mine <laughs> he's like wait then where will i be i'm the king and then like the other people comes and they're like oh you have the junior suite for you and he's like why the junior suite and kuvira's like ha, i get what i want and oh boy like this was the start of this whole thing you know and uh, like so many things are happening you know like raiku has his, his own prop like you know uh, like you know own intentions he was probably trying to put this guy so that he could control him you know like you know make him a puppet that's probably what raiku was intention like you know, intentions was while kuvira had her own intention she's like oh i'm not leaving from my throne if someone come wants to come here i'm going to crush them and uh, that's her intentions while this poor guy this Wu, he's just stuck in the middle, you know, <laughs> just, you know, like, continuously getting into trouble. All right, the next day, everything kind of sees pretty bad, the whole situation, like, you know, all the things that he was waiting for, uh, Wu, has all been actually looted before, and uh, no, uh, like, you know, like, you know, nothing else, nothing was left, not even the crown, the little brooch was left. And that's it. That was the only symbol of him being of royal lineage. And uh, yeah, Wu is not happy about that, definitely. No dancing badger moles, so that's sad as well. On the other side, Korra is training with uh, Toph, and it's nice to see Toph back in form again. She did say, like, if I was a bit younger, I would have showed you <laughs> a lot more. But even in this age, he, she's doing it perfectly. She's just standing there, not moving. 
Cora's trying to attack her, but it's just like, nothing's happening, and she's just completely wiping the floor with Cora. <laughs> Cora's like, what the hell? You just want to, you just want to beat me up. You, that's what you're doing. <laughs> Toph is like, yeah, this is fantastic. You know, like I just love beating people up. Like those those swamp benders were just couldn't take a beating, but here you are now. I'm I'm having the time of my love life. Just <laughs> just bullying you. <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. Ah. Oh. Okay, so the next scene, the coronation ceremony. Everyone's sitting there. Vera, Tonrak, Eska Desna, um, Lin is also there. While on the other side, I think, yeah, um, Zuko's also yeah, Zuko's there. Zuko, then there's this another lady beside him, um, Raiko and Tenzin. So from all the nations, everyone is here. <coughs> Wu, <laughs> Wu tries to give a speech. And everyone's like, woo, yeah, clap, 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 that, that's it. And then as soon as he says, like, all right, like, it's like a little, um, you know, medal for the person who helped us the most, Kuvira, you know, gives her the medal. And it's like, this is the high, highest honor of, of the Earth Kingdom. And Kuvira is like, okay, let me speak. And I knew everything was going to go, go wrong here. I was not, however, expecting her to completely say that I don't care about anyone. You know, I don't care about this king. I'm not leaving this throne that I'm sitting upon. And uh, yeah, if anyone has any problem with that, come to me. I'll just crush you. That's basically what she said. I was not expecting her to just directly say that. And uh, yeah, he, she like, like, like this is the thing, you know, like she thinks she's better. Than all the other people be before her and that's why she's going to do whatever the hell she wants to like this whole thing is so i don't know like i did say like i am going to say that i do agree she was definitely she did definitely help us out help the earth kingdom out when they were really in trouble you know all the like you know a riot that was going on in basing say i'm pretty sure kuvira handled most of it stopped all of them and just you know like made peace come back into Ba Sing Se. I don't deny that but what she's doing after that is a problem here you know she did a great job good like you know like that everyone like you know everyone knows that and everyone definitely accepts that but the thing that she says after that is like oh since I did everything I like you know I made this place come under control I am the new leader over here and if anyone has any problem going to crush them and uh, now it would have been a what could have, what could i say like you know, a better situation if she didn't have any supporters she has a lot of supporters all the people from ba Sing se probably like you know in, in that dangerous time when everyone just killing everyone like you know just attacking them burning the place down you know when probably at that moment when kufi had saved them all these people became their like you know Kuvira's biggest followers because they were living that like you know that in, during that time they they were like you know going through that disaster and Kuvira was like a god to them who came before them and saved them from that situation obviously they are going to worship her and like you know like treat her and like a leader and be, become like their biggest followers so that's how she got so many followers as well like there's like you know this is a thing there's like a few people who worship her a few people who fear her you know and uh, that's how she's controlling everyone fear and worship you know and both are needed to control and like you know lead but the problem here is a few people completely worships her a few people people completely like you know fears her and uh, that's the thing here like either people are terrified of her or people are like acting like you know as if she's like some kind of a god so kind of out of control you know in a way but yeah she she is like she, she's like yeah this is perfect this is i'm just going to control this place now and uh, we then uh, you know get to the next part where bolin is a little bit troubled bolin's like what the hell like uh, like you know why did she say that 
Varric is there and Varric is like, ah, don't you worry, like, you know, Kumbira controls the whole nation now and we are here in this place. We don't have anything to worry about. Kumbira is going to handle it. And you know what, honestly speaking, Varric is happy as long as he gets to do his own thing. And after that, we see Varric gets like a new spirit vine merchandise, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> He's like, oh, new thing to do, like, you know, like, do tests on. He's happy, he just goes away and goes to her, his lab trying to test that spirit vine or whatever. And uh, yeah, okay, Suin. So oh no, sorry. Um, Kuvira comes in, and again, Bolin was having little doubts, and Kuvira's like, Oh, you don't worry about it. You know, that was just a little threat. I'm not going to do anything like that. Which obviously, again, like, yeah, like, I, I, I doubt that. Kuvira meant each and everything that he, she says, she said over there. She's just saying that to make Bolin, like, you know, just go along with her plans. And uh, Su Yin comes in and Su talks about how, you know, she is in, on behalf of the other, all the representatives. And she's like, you have to, like, you know, step down. And uh, Kuvira does say that, oh, where were you when all of the people were in trouble? I came here and I picked them up from this thing. Uh, you were just in Sao Fu doing nothing. So who gives you that right? Now, Su Yin says that, I didn't want to do that because I wanted, I didn't want any power. And what are you doing here now? You, you, you help them out. That's all well and good. But you're saying like you're going to crush everyone. And uh, Kubrick is like, all right, then. Yeah, you stay in Zhao Fu. We're going to come for you next, which is obviously another threat. And uh, yeah, things are not looking good. Again, as I said, like, and I, I do know that she did a lot of things. She helped the people out. But as Su Yin says, like, you know, like, like what she's doing after that, that's not okay. And uh, something must be done. Okay, Wu is not happy about it. He's like, oh, let's go shopping. Bolin comes in and Bolin and Marco have a little bit of a quarrel where Bolin tries to justify the whole thing of, oh, um, Kuvia just said that. And she did, did, wouldn't like, actually do all of that. She just said that to threaten the others. But Marco's not having it, obviously. Like, and I'm 100% I'm, I'm with Marco. She's just acting like a dictator. That's not how you do stuff. Bolin is like, oh, you are like, you know, like you, you, you do, like, you know, you're like a, the bodyguard to, of the most pathetic person here. Like, you know, that rich, you know, like, you know, king who does nothing, you know, just keep doing that while we, like, you know, save the world. And he goes away. And I really hope, like, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Bolin would understand little by little. But it'll probably be too late by the time he realizes that what Kuvira is trying to do. Uh, so, yeah. And it feels like Bolin's losing people, you know, like his brother, uh, Opal, also, like, is not happy with him. And just, he's, he's just, just justifying all the actions with. Like, 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 not, not looking at the actual truth. Alright, uh, now Cora and Prof were talking and uh, Cora's like, like, what is happening? Why am I not able to get back that original strength? And here, Toph drops a bomb. Toph is like, you still have metal in you. And Cora's like, what? And didn't Sue just take out all the metal? <laughs> Toph is like, ah, my daughters don't know how to metal bend properly. What can they do? You still have metal in you. And Corrin's like, alright, like, help me out. Like, you know, take that out of me. And, uh, yeah. Now, on the other side... <laughs> Woo is just having a smoothie when he gets the shock of his life. He sees everyone wearing Kuvira merchandise. And he's like, what the hell? Like, I'm the king here. Why is Kuvira getting all the attention? And he just throws a tantrum, throws the juice at them and everything, just makes a mess out of that place. <sighs> Marco's like, alright, let's get you out of here. And everyone's mad. Then Wu just goes to the, the throne. He's a random kid sitting there and he's like, why are you on the throne? Get away. This is my coronation. You know, like, I don't care about your birthday and just takes everything, just sits down, starts crying. He's like, why is this happening? This is the worst day of my life. And here Marco actually is like, you know, knocks some sense into him. He's like, like, even though I completely disagree with the way Kufira is doing things, 
It is true, she did something. What have you done? Like, why would people favor you when you've done nothing for them? You know? like, imagine you being in the same position. Would you accept someone like you being the king? And uh, like, he was like, yeah, I understand. You know, like, I, I, I know that. And <laughs> like, yeah, like this, this guy is just, you know, like a troubled individual, you know, I, I, I was kind of like, you know, a little bit <laughs> skeptical about him and, and when he was introduced, but as soon as I saw his weird, goofy way of doing things, I realized that he, he's probably one of those, what can I say, people who has not been like, you know, who, who doesn't know what to do, you know, he, he didn't have proper guidance. And that's what's the problem with him. He needs proper guidance. He could be a better person. But now the way he is, yeah, it's not going to work. So, Marco's like, all right, let's get you out of here because like, people were outside. And <laughs> he's like, you'll carry me? <laughs> uh, that was funny. All right, Toff tries to take out the metal from Cora's body, but Cora is just continuously getting PTSD and everything. He, she just cannot able to like you know, relax herself. And in the end, Toff is like, "Oh great, like you know, like I cannot be bothered by this. Like, you know, you 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 metal bend and bring it out on your own. Like, you you're not like you know, relaxing yourself. Like you do it. Like I can't be bothered." And um, Toff does say something which is kind of interesting. She says like, "Oh, maybe you are like deliberately letting the." metal in your body because you you know you just want something to be the reason for you to not do a better job maybe that's like your way of running out away from this situation which i feel like she probably hit the nail a little bit i'm pretty sure cora's mental thing is also like you know actually what Toff said here is also a part of her her mental problem problem here She's probably, like, you know, she doesn't even realize it, I think, Cora herself, but in her, like, you know, mental, what do you call it, workings, you know, is probably deliberately keeping the metal in her, because as Toff said, you know, she wants, like, an excuse for, you know, like, for her to not perform better. She wants that excuse, because she's been so scared after that, you know, and she thinks that everyone's moving forward and she's unable to do anything that that is like an you know, unconsciously like you know making her like this she herself doesn't realize but Toff probably nailed like you know kind of uh, said the correct thing here she probably hit the nail and this is probably like another mental portion of her problem and she herself doesn't realize it but it's like you know just unconsciously not letting her take the metal out so she needs to control her mind and do it on her own yeah so okay now we can see that the, the, the uh, milo uh iki and uh Kinora, they have been tasked by tenzin to find a uh, not ang sorry kora and bring her back while on the other side Varric is very happy with his new spirit vine. He's like, oh, we're going to make a lot of experiments out of this. This will be great. That's very tense. So yeah, that was it. Things are not looking good. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So that's it. Thanks for watching. This is my reaction to The Legend of Korra, book four, episode number two and three. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll check them out. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys next week with two more episodes of The Legend of Korra. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.